Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. The ankles. So, you got a couple habits come habits come out there as well, like off of platforms. A lot of B reverse, um, pa or not paralyzer, your side B, B reverse off of platforms to try and catch you for dashing underneath you. Um, there was something else that was happening a lot. Oh, after you came down with Nair, you were very quick to dash away and then try and come back in with something. And at the start, you did catch you with a couple grabs and then you threw out, like, I think, like one or two paralyzers. Um, just be careful when you're when you're going for your mix-ups when you're approaching someone. Nothing wrong with nairing and then dashing away. But make sure that when you nair and dash away, you're also going to mix up your timing of when you're going to approach your second time. Okay? Right. Because there's quite a few times where you're trying to, and I know we're talking about reads a little bit here, but what was happening with you is you jump down like this with the nair, then dash away, then dash right back in with a grab. And it would work if I tried to punish the nair. Because I go like this, or as you did that and dashed away, I'd try and go in with something, you'd catch me for free. And that's totally fine, right? However, mm -hmm. if I start to mix up my timing and I see you're going to nair and then dash away, I can do two things to try and finesse you in that situation. I can either try and dash attack you to catch you before your uh, grab comes out, or I can just do nothing. And then once you come back here and go for your grab, you miss, and I come over the top and go for something. I get some sort of punish. Okay? So this, right. once again, this goes, I guess it would go back to even slowing the game down even more for yourself. So if you want to go in for the nair and then dash away, you don't have to do anything after that. You can go nair, dash away, and see what I do. Because I could just completely show you my hand and go like that or go like this and completely miss. And now you're getting potentially even better punishes or you're not getting reversed. Okay? Right. Um, at the high percents, that's one of those things that was happening a lot yeah, is the approach game basically fell apart. Right? I was I was at very high percent for a really long time and I just didn't approach you anymore. And mm -hmm. I wanted to see how you'd approach me. And quite a few times you get quite close to me and then you get scared. Even though I was yeah. like one single touch of death away. You could have done basically anything and killed me. Like when I was over here, I got up like this, right? I got up and I shielded. And I don't think you threw out a grab right away, but you threw out something and you like dashed back almost to center stage. And then I told you to grab and it was just way too late at that point, right? Mm -hmm. So stuff like that. That's why you want to make a read because here's the thing. If I'm at 160% and I don't have to be even close to that high, your up B will absolutely destroy me. Right? Same with up smash or back air. Like all kinds of stuff is going to absolutely kill me. So I'd rather, now that I want to get grabbed, I would rather get grabbed than hit by anything else if I'm at that high of a percent. Okay? Right. So this would boil down more to, I guess, paying, paying attention to player emotion in this situation to say, okay, what would my opponent be thinking based on their percent or the stocks or even just the, the setting of, the, of the, uh, the game that we're playing in at the moment? So if I'm at, like, let's say, la let's say if it's last stock, last hit, and either one of us could die. We're both like let's say at 130 or 140. Uh, just because you're at 140 and you could die does not mean that I am fearless because I could also mm -hmm. mess up once to completely die too. So you can take advantage of that in some cases. And I have actually a pretty old video. Uh, I went over a set of it was Sam Sora versus MK Leo, and it was last hit set, uh, last hit situation. And there's very there's a ton of reason to be scared. It's MK Leo game four. Anything could happen right here, and I could talk about this. This is the same type of situation again. Right here, uh, Leo is running on Samsora's shield. And as far as the sequence goes, this is where fear, and I had somebody ask on a previous video, is there any? Is there ever a reason to play in fear? And I guess there's reasons to do it, but I wouldn't say there's conscious reasons that you should do it. So for example, here, he stays in shield. If he just up smashes right here, like a YOLO up smash, he wins the game. I, of course it's scary. Of course, right here, Sam Sora or uh, MK Leo could also up smash right here, and they could both they could trade, they could both that at the exact same time, uh, they could both get sent up at the exact same time with like a DBZ type of moment, and Sam Sora dies first because he get launched faster. Does he get grabbed here? Yeah, he just stays. He stayed in shield for so long here. Let's just watch that at full speed. So right here, he lets him push him for so long, then the double roll into shield. And then that was just a panic option grab. Up smash right here. Up smash right here. Roll, up smash right here. Double roll, up smash right here. If he up smash right here even. So many times, he could have up smash four times. And he would have just, he could have won the game right here. Right? So, of course, you don't know. But I even said in the last uh, video as well against Tweak, if you have to take that gamble, if you go for the gamble with an attack and you're right, then you win. If you go with a gamble with an attack and you're wrong, then you lose. But if you go with a gamble with a defense, you will always, always lose 
because your opponent is in your head and they have the ability to be the aggressor. If they are going to be the aggressor, they are probably going to be able to take a stock or take the set. You got to throw out a hitbox. You got to see what's going to happen here. And that's the thing too, especially in the same situation, really. It is game four again, same situation. If you lose this game because you went for an attack and you missed, the set's not over. If you just didn't do anything and you got hit, you think to yourself, if I just did anything, if I did anything at all, I could have won this game as far as throwing a strong attack. He wanted the surefire kill versus making a read. And MKLeo was like throwing out stuff like all around him and he was jumping over top of him and stuff. He's like, bro, you could have up smashed five or six times and just killed him. But he got nervous <laughs> and then he lost, right? So yeah, I would say from a perspective of making reads, one of the things I want you to try and do too is just go over go go in with the mindset of saying that you're practicing making reads so one of the hugest things about that is if you try to make a read and you're wrong that's just part of practicing right don't be afraid to be wrong be like okay he's gonna neutral get up and shield i'm going to just dash and go for a grab immediately it's like well why did you think i'm gonna shield it's like well i'm at 150 why, why would i not shield mm -hmm. right if i just get up and f smash then i'm insane <laughs> like that's just not gonna happen yeah. right or if you throw out a grab and let's say i jump and go like this I'm not going to like at 160 come down and try and kill you right if i jump way out of the way maybe against your grab specifically i would have had to like pre-plan that so as soon as it gets to the top of here i'd fast fall and come down with a down air and i'm going mm -hmm. to make a read on the fact that you're standing here and you're going to dash in with a grab in which case if your or my read on your read which kind of gets confusing but if i were to make a read on the fact that i think you're going to grab i'm going to go like this and come down immediately no matter what you do because i'm trying to right. catch you before you have a chance to shield so you can now start to layer reads off of this. And let's say, if I am going to come down like this, you can either delay your grab and get your grab, or you can just F smash me or go for up B, right? Or down smash right. or whatever you want, right? So it's gonna be a little bit of, I guess, seeing the future a little bit. That's what making a read is. Predicting to an extent saying, based on someone's percent or the situation, they're probably gonna do X, right? So don't be afraid. There's tons of things that were happening last game where I was making lots of reads and if we were to really go back and look at it, I made lots of reads that were completely wrong, right? But it was also right, balanced yeah. out. It was also balanced out by making reads that were right. So I've had players like this in the past too, where they play very textbook and there's nothing wrong with playing proper and textbook, but also sometimes you have to break the rules a little bit and make those reads and be wrong versus mm -hmm. saying, I'm only going to punish what is given to me. And that's it. Right? That's, yeah, for sure. Don't be afraid to play a little bit crafty or cheeky. If you do something and it doesn't work out, it's like, okay, well, whatever. <laughs> so yeah. that's kind of how you learn how to do stuff. Like when I was walking up to you and going for pay, like um, shield flickering in front of you, there's nothing that you had done to tell me that that was a good idea to do. I just did it to see what would happen. Right? Right. Try and be a little bit curious in that regard too. I'm not saying you have to do that, but like, yeah, your, your mix ups in general. Yeah, that was another piece that because like I feel like my approach game in particular is pretty linear and that was like with the same timing thing mixing up the timings with the dash back and come back in mm -hmm. um yeah I have definitely noticed that especially I went to a tournament a while ago and that was definitely the one of the big things I noticed was that I was like man I cannot find another way to get in okay so we can talk about this really quickly and then we'll play in this game but one of the biggest things that you can do too with your characters intimidate someone to potentially make a mistake thanks to your speed your first step i think you have the farthest first step of any character in the game so you can get mm -hmm. into someone's range and out of the range like immediately i think mithra has a faster first step now technically but you go further so you're basically the same speed but you go a little bit further so right if someone's in the corner and terrified take advantage of the fact that you can corner them you don't have to land on their shield just get right up in their face then dash out of the way jump back out of the way Right? If people start to, like, let's say, grab in the corner like this, or they start to roll in from the corner, if you were to dash up and jump back and come down with Nair, that's all your Nair setups right there. Versus trying to mm -hmm. jump in with a Nair like, this, like that and really thread the needle and hope that they just make a mistake, you can jump back with your Nair, and if they don't budge, you now give yourself some space, and you can dash out of the way and keep yourself safe. Yeah, and then if, like, if they roll or something, then it's a free Nair flip kick. Exactly, exactly. Oh, I'm not air around. dodging in. I don't know what just happened. <laughs> uh, it's all good. So yeah, you'll notice like towards the end of the game there, I really am switching up my play style, whether or not you think it's optimal, suboptimal, or, or toying with you or whatever it is. It's more so that I'm experimenting to see what you'll do. And I have 
some, I guess, percent in the bank, I guess you could say, to mess up, right? This is how, right. This is how you get experience when you're practicing, or this is how you work on your reads, or this is how you work on your reaction time, this is how you try and set up situations or try to uh, provoke some sort of pattern out of somebody as well. I will say that it's not very optimal for me to forward tilt you like 15 times. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to I want to try and get your habits out of you too, right? It's also from a perspective yeah. of coaching. Is he air dodging? Is he rolling? Is he missing text? He does does he do get up attack every single time? Like what are you doing out of that, right? And you could be doing stuff like that too. Uh, it could be happening to me or just anybody that you practice with. Or it's like I'm just gonna forward tilt them and I'm going to jump back, paralyzer. And even if I completely miss, I just want to see if it'll work. Because if it does work, now you have yourself a situation that you could take advantage of. For example, if you forward tilt someone into the corner and run all the way to here, very strong chance they're going to roll in because they're probably trying to DI in for an F, for an F smash or for an upbeat, right? So let's say you knock someone down, run all the way to here, jump back, paralyzer, then you catch them, I don't know, they're frozen there, then you can go for flip kick, you can go for an air into flip kick, you can try and catch them off of the, um, I guess the stun release, whatever you call it, into an upbeat, whatever you want. You can kind of sauce on people a little bit as well, right? Yeah, just working on putting pressure on. Yeah, just trying to be creative. So it, gets, it makes your opponent super uncertain as to what's going to happen, right? If every single time, let's say you knock me down, he's running up B right here, I'm going to start rolling in because I'm going to escape the situation, mm -hmm. right? But if you've caught me for rolling in with like Paralyzer, F smash back here, or like a down smash or something back, back at roll distance, now I'm terrified and I just don't know what to do, right? I might even tech in place and just shield and I can get free grabs just because mm -hmm. you setting up more situations and trying to keep it creative. Right. All right, 